From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Reynosa, L.A. Police. Oh, hiya, Sergeant. Any luck? Nothing. This Top Olinley boy's been in jams before. He's a tough cookie, and we don't scare him a bit. What's his story? Says he was walking through the courtyard of the apartment house when you jumped him from the bushes. Oh. Claims he thought it was a stick-up and fired that shot at you in self-defense. What was he doing there in the first place? Calling on a girlfriend, only she'd given him the wrong address. Sure. Well, we can hold him overnight for carrying a concealed weapon, but that's about all, Johnny. He'll make bail in the morning. Well, fine. Let him. Things aren't adding up, and it's got him worried. He's afraid he's being double-crossed, and he's fighting mad about it. On the loose, maybe he'll be a help to us. How? Oh. Maybe he can find Eddie Kalin. What are you talking about? Eddie Kalin's downtown in the morgue on a marble slab. Sergeant, want to bet? <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Los Angeles, to the home office, Trinity Mutual Insurance Company Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Kalen matter. Expense account continued. I was following a hunch, one that had started when Sergeant Reynosa said the police found the door of the Kalen apartment locked on the night of Eddie's death, locked with a key. And now the hunch was stronger. The way Leanley had acted, Topo Leanley, the gambler from whom Eddie had won $60,000 that night. Things like Lila Kalen had said about her husband, they all added up. But it was still only a hunch, not proof. And proof I had to have. And at the moment, the only chance I could see of getting it was to backtrack on Eddie Kalin. His hangouts, his contacts, his missing friend Pete Steimer, his movements during the hours before his car was found blazing at the bottom of a canyon in Palos Verdes. In a way, what I had to do was bring him back to life. Expense account item six, $14.10. Transportation two and incidentals at a dim little hole-in-the-wall bar out on Santa Monica Boulevard called the Cafe Eloines. It was an out-of-the-way clip joint dedicated to the Mood Caribbean, complete with palm fronds, drinks and coconut shells, and a lovely little hostess with a beautifully developed and well-rounded Latin accent. You would like a nice table, amigo? Oh, this one's fine. But I would like a nice talk. Uh, sit down, honey. Let's get acquainted. Well, maybe for a few minutes. My name is Pepita. Of course. What else? I'm Johnny Dollar. <laughs> That's a funny name. Oh, I'm a funny guy. Will, uh, will you buy me a drink? Uh, is that the gimmick here? Gimmick? Well, what do you order, a champagne cocktail? Well, see. For which I pay two bucks. It's made with ten cents worth of salt turn. You get a one dollar kickback. Isn't that the way it's played? Are you with the vice squad? No, forget it. Relax. Hey, look. I'll do better than buy you a drink. What are you doing after you're through here? No. No dates. When I quit work here, I go straight home, amigo. And I live with my mother. Oh, well, that's a very good arrangement. Cheaper that way for both of you. But here's ten bucks. What I want from you is some information. About a customer who comes in here a lot, or used to anyway. Eddie Kalin. You know him? You are not the police. Or you would not give me ten dollars just for talking. Sure, I know Eddie. What you want to know about him? When did you see him last? On Thursday. The day before he was killed. How did he act? What did he say? Anything out of the ordinary? Oh, he said he loved me madly, passionately, devotionally. And if I do not love him too, he will kill himself. Just like ordinary. He was lying, of course. But he always was such exciting to listen. Then he buy me champagne cocktail and borrow from me the money to pay for it. <laughs> Quite a boy. Que hombre. He was, how you say, he was the most. Yeah. How long was he in here that night? Quien sabe. One hour, perhaps. By himself? No. With his amigo, with Pete. Pete Steimer, huh? Si. Have you seen Pete since then? No. I do not think nobody has seen him. What do you think's happened to him? Who knows? Maybe he's too sad for Eddie dying. So he is hide out someplace, all by himself. Well, that's a theory. Did Eddie seem worried that night? No. Scared? 
No, not scarce. Nothing special on his mind, apparently. No, just like always. <laughs> just like Eddie. You know. No, I never met him. Oh? Then, then why you ask this question? Oh, just a routine business matter. What about women? Women? Yeah, other girlfriends of Eddie's. Uh, next to you, of course. Oh, next to me. With Eddie, every girl was first. Well, what about the nightclub here? Any of them come in here, work here? Oh, Eddie was too smart for that. In each one place, only one girl. That way, no trouble. Eddie was smart. Yeah, he was the most. He... What about girls in other places around town? Do you know any of them? No, I do not know any, but... Uh... But you've heard rumors. Well, there is a place which is called the Breath Monkey. Ah, oh, yeah. They have girls there which, um, how you say it, they, they take off some clothes and go jump around with the music. Strippers? Well, strippers. Well, somebody has always make jokes with me about one of those strippers. They say Eddie has had the big thing with her. <laughs> they think to make me mad, but there's no difference to me. I know how Eddie is. Do you know the girl's name? Ah, uh, the very silly name, which she has made up. It's Marty Midnight. Marty Midnight? She has black hair like me, but mine is natural black. Oh, yeah, sure. I figured as much. It's very beautiful. Mm, muchas gracias, Johnny. Well, thanks for some pleasant conversation. You are leaving now? Yeah, why? Right. But maybe you will come back. No? I wasn't planning to. At uh, one o'clock, I am through working. If you will come back... No? Mm, no. We wouldn't want to worry your poor old mother, would we? Keep her waiting up. What are you talking about? My mother is leaving Havana, Cuba. Expense account item seven, $23.40. More transportation and some more of those incidentals. This time at the Brass Monkey Inn. That name had come up twice now. Eddie Kalin's widow had mentioned it first. So I figured I'd better have a look at it. The Eloines had been a fairly quiet place, dimly lighted with a big play on that mystery of the jungle routine. But the Brass Monkey was a pony of a different tint. At the Brass Monkey, they let down their hair and really lived. The chorus line was on and at it when I arrived. And strangely enough, the girls were all dolls. Pert, young, lively. Seven of them from left to right. But not one of the seven had midnight black hair. I leaned against the service bar and waited for the bartender to come down out of the clouds and notice me. And he finally did. Oh, sorry, Buster. Just couldn't see you for looking at you. Oh, that's all right. Who'd bother with a customer at a time like this? Another odd lover. Man, man, I'll tell you true. There is the cream of the crop. Seven shining sisters. The Pleiades, brother. The absolute up-top zenith of the entire ecclesiastic firmament. What do you have to drink? Scotch over ice. Checo. I read a lot. That's where I get all them big words. Always try to better myself. Get ahead, man. That's the thing. Yes, so I've heard. So I read all the time. And I got a system, too, a shortcut. You know all them books you see around? You know what they're full of? Well, opinions vary. Words. And you know where they get them? From the dictionary. So I don't mess around. I go right to headquarters. The only book I read is the dictionary. You what? Sure. Read it through twice. And now I'm clear up to J on the third time around. You know what a Joss house is? Yeah, it's a Chinese temple. I uh, think I need that drink now. Oh, I'm sorry, Buster. Here you are. Say, you're pretty smart yourself. Oh, I'm a pedant. Pedant? That's with a P. Nah, nah I won't get to that for another three months. Uh, that's a buck even for the drink. Here you go. Keep the change. Well, thanks. I. Uh, hey, this is a 20 you give me. Yeah, I know. Oh, I see. Well, Buster, the answer is no. I can't fix you up with one of the girls. Uh-uh. All I want is some information. Like what? Like where is Marty Midnight this evening? Oh, that I wouldn't know. She hasn't been around since, uh... Well, not for the last four or five nights. Since Eddie Kalem was murdered? Is that what you're about to say? Police? Insurance investigator. The company I represent issued a policy on it. Eddie Kalen with insurance? Yeah, he took it out about two months ago. Who's the beneficiary? His wife. Well, 
Well, I never met the gal, but I guess she's got something common. She must have took quite a beating off of Eddie. Man. Oh, man, that cat could really operate. So I get it. You happen to know where Marty lives? Nah, she moved a few weeks ago, after she took up with Eddie. I don't even know her real name. Hey, is the manager here? I'm the manager, Buster. I hired him, fired him, and in between, just look at him. <laughs> oh, man, what a life. <laughs> you know a friend of Eddie's named Pete Steimer? Sure I know. He hasn't been around either. Disappeared that same night, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad night all around. There was another guy dropped out of sight, too, a, a hood named Mike Kelso, one of Topo Leanley's boys. Do you know Topo? He comes in all the time. He's a... Hey, hey, wait a minute. You must be the cat that broke his arm. <laughs> well, congratulations, felicitations, and happy days. I'll have a drink myself on that. Ah, a real popular boy. Huh? Oh, the most. I understand he got his start by leaning out of his baby carriage and shoving his mother under a car. Was he in here that night? Well, sure. That's where Eddie met him. I told Eddie to stay clear of that game. And was I right? And you think that's why he was killed for the $60,000 he won that night? Buster, that's the type of question I never answer. And that's exactly why I stay so healthy. Well, you don't have to answer. That's where all the logic points. Eddie met Tom Bolini in here that night and was invited into one of Lini's big-time poker games. Eddie was lucky, plenty lucky, and Lini got hit hard. He decided he wouldn't stand still for it, so he and his muscle man, Mike Kelso, went around to Eddie's apartment, beat him up, got the 60,000 bucks, took Eddie out to the Palace Verdes Hills, ran him off the cliff, and set fire to his car. Any reason why it couldn't have happened like that? No, no. But there are a lot of loose ends. Like what has happened to Pete Steimer and Marty Midnight? Scared silly, hiding out. Mike Kelso. Same thing. He's sweating it out, waiting to see which way the wind blows. Oh, there's whispers around that he double-crossed Topo and ran out with the dough. Could be. But I keep remembering that door. What door? To Eddie's apartment. It was left locked with a key. So what's it got to do with every... Uh-oh, the police. I'm raided again. Hey, Red, dump that water bar whiskey down a sink. Jackie, get back there and tell the girls to cover up. Now, take it easy. You cats just keep your seats. Everything is copacetic. Relax, relax. It's not a raid. That's Sergeant Reynosa. He's handling the Kalen case. Buster, a cop's a cop no matter what he's handling. Now, shake it up, Red. Turn on that water in the sink and dump it all in. What the devil are you doing here, Johnny? Having a drink? What's up, Sergeant? I'm looking for a girl who's supposed to work here named Marty Midnight. So am I. What's your reason? Suspicion of murder. What? A guy was killed in her apartment about an hour ago. The neighbors heard the shots. And it's real crazy, Johnny. It just can't be, but it is. We got a fast check on the fingerprints. You know who the guy was? Sure. It was Eddie Kalen. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a stakeout, a manhunt, and a tired intern breaking his heart to keep life in a broken body. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>